guys uh, welcome back to the channel sorry for the delay uh, annual leave and uh, back to work uh, in trays have sort of delayed me uh, anyway what I want to talk about on this episode isn't a, a game um, but actually some gaming support in terms of uh, all bats and um, battle scenarios uh, which can be quite difficult difficult to find for the uh, Asia Pacific um, campaign around World War Two. obviously Flames of War, they did the Gung Ho and Banzai, there's a bit in Rising Sun. Um, the Warlord supplement, it's not bad for getting a few bits and pieces, but on the whole it leaves you light from a lot of the actions in Burma and some of the other islands. So I've been doing some shopping around and what I'd like to introduce today is a new book, um, which is uh, by a company called Red Octopus uh, Frontline. Great Asia War, the Allied and Japanese forces in Asia and the Pacific between 1941 and 1945. So for me this is a great resource book put together by uh, Ralph and Britta. Okay, it's maybe not the cheapest, um, but for me it gives a great overview of 41 through to 45. There's a lot of the work for you uh, and on the whole I feel it, it's a fairly accurate account. I think a little bit challenging is getting the uh, points to match up to uh, the version 3 books for Gung Ho and for uh, Banzai but a little bit of tweaking uh, and you can make it work. You can either lift all the Orbats straight out of the frontline book or adopt the point system between version 3 uh, and then blend it back into the book itself. Um, you get a, a good selection from uh, Imperial Marine, uh, Guard, uh, Japanese paratroopers, you get the Dutch, um, you've got uh, obviously the Chindits in there, you've got the early war Filipinos, um, you know it's a really really good selection um, which will you know go a long way uh, to putting together your Asia and Pacific gaming. I also like the variation in special rules that they provide and uh, some new unique weapon systems which although quite rare and many would say that weren't fielded that often to have those opportunities in some of your more specialist games late war Iwo Jima, Sapin, Okinawa uh, you know it just adds a flavor you can also do some what if scenarios i.e. if the US didn't go for a nuclear option and you went for the invasion of the mainland and then you're deploying uh, heavier Japanese tanks uh, different weapon systems you know it all adds to the flavor for the Asia Pacific campaign Frontline also produce uh, a, a range of other books which cover more specific uh, combat actions around Guadalcanal mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so forth and they give much more detail on those focused uh, combat actions um, but for me you know a great buy if you're really into the Asia Pacific well worth it is the Great Asia War uh, couldn't recommend it enough uh, and that's a big shout out to Ralph and Britta huge amount of efforts gone into this around the research um, for the Orbats um, the unique weapon systems and the special rules. So what's coming up next? Uh, as you've seen uh, and here are the pictures, uh, I've now got my um, Chinese Nationalist Army. Uh, that's a big thanks to uh, James Harvey of Devil's Paintbrush uh, who works on and delivers all my stuff for me. Uh, great value, great quality, couldn't recommend him more. Um, so the next session is going to be a battle report on the uh, Chinese nationalists who are going to be defending the Burma-China uh, road which was critical uh, to support the Allies as uh, the Japanese occupied Burma. Uh, this is going to be an offense-defense game uh, around about 2,000 points version 3 for the Chinese and about 3,000 uh, for the Japanese attacking forces. It's going to be quite an interesting game. Uh, uh, the Chinese are um, confident trained uh, but only got limited uh, artillery and air support a mixture of some of the uh, early war uh, Germans supported by some limited US armor so a very interesting game coming up uh, and we'll see that next week